Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and we have Ryan with us, and we are continuing with the series on chakras. We have discussed the first two chakras, where we have seen for Capricorn, Aquarius, and Sagittarius and Pisces, and now we will see the other chakra. So if you have not watched it, then please go and watch it. The part one, this is part two, okay? And we also have the part three. So be patient. Yes, please. Okay. Well, thank you. It's good good being back. Thanks for having me again. Um, <clears throat> so we talked about uh, Aquarius and Capricorn as related to the first chakra and Pisces and Sagittarius as related to the second chakra. And so the next chakras we need to consider uh, are the third chakra and the fourth chakra within the body. Now, again, we're following this, this line as though we take the, the signs and we flatten them out and stretch them out and we've got these polarities. And Aries and Pisces, or excuse me, Aries and Scorpio are related to the third chakra. Now, this makes sense because oftentimes that third chakra is related to our uh, sense of personal power. A lot of martial arts bring your energy down to this third chakra to have more drive and more will. And again, the third chakra is interesting because it's ruled over by Mars, which is the specific planet related to drive and will and passion and becoming within the world. And we think about Aries, we have Aries, which is sign number one. And anytime we have an, uh, an odd sign, that represents the, the positive um, the positive flow or the positive polarity of a chakra. So Aries is the positive polarity of the third chakra. And um, Scorpio is the negative polarity of the third chakra, which is really fascinating. We didn't go into this in the first video, but a lot of people talk about astrology as though it's seasonal, such as um, people say things like, well, in the springtime, we have this kind of experience uh, because, because the sun is going through Aries. And that only makes sense in the Northern Hemisphere for some countries because the Southern Hemisphere is opposite. And so when we start to think about these, these uh, chakras within the Zodiac, we see that, the, we see that the, the Zodiac is not about seasons. It's about the movement of the sun to the earth and how the sun passes through our inner Zodiac, our inner chakra system. So when the sun is going through Aries, that's when the sun is moving towards as close to the North Pole as possible. Which it's like that energy moving up towards our crown chakra. Now, when the sun is, is going back downwards, because the sun looks like it moves related to the earth, when it's moving back down to the southern hemisphere, down towards the south pole, that's when the sun is moving to that place where um, Scorpio is. So that's the descending energy. That's, the, the, um, that's how we can start to see that the zodiac is not seasonal. It's actually based on the chakra system. But anyway, um, so Aries is the third chakra. And in the third chakra, what do we find? We find two things. Uh, Saturn is debilitated when he's in Aries. So Saturn is debilitated in the third chakra. The sun, however, is exalted when it's in the third chakra. The sun is exalted in, um, uh, in Aries. And what's also interesting is the moon is considered to be debilitated in the third chakra. So here we have Saturn exalted in the third chakra. And Saturn rules over the first chakra, Capricorn and Aquarius. Um, and then we have in uh, the sun rules Leo and Cancer is ruled over by the moon. The sun is exalted in the third. The moon is debilitated in the third. Now, what does this tell us? Well, number one, the reason Saturn is debilitated in the third chakra is because Saturn is about survival. Saturn is about um, dealing with problems, enduring through difficulties, and we all have to go through those things. It's not, none of us will ever escape the influences of Saturn. But the third chakra is about um, our, our personal power, our personal drive, our going out and being successful in career, going out and being successful in these different things in the world. And we, can't, we have a harder time doing that if we're still suffering from survival issues. It's much harder to be successful in college or in a marriage or in a business if you're struggling with Saturn's, Saturn's um, survival issues. But if we think about the sun, the sun represents our highest manifestation of self as it rules over this uh, six chakra area. When we take that light of the sun and we bring it down into the third chakra, which again is our, 
our ego, our small sense of self, when our small sense of self is driven by spirit, is driven by that light of divine consciousness, which the sun represents, Surya, then our life becomes divine. So in a way, if we can start trying to live such that we imagine this inner light of the sun is functioning in our personal sphere, our personal life, then our life becomes divine. And that's why when we think about the sun, it being exalted in the third chakra, that's very helpful. Now, on the other hand, we have the moon uh, debilitating the third chakra. But the moon is debilitated in um, the, the, the negative polarity of this third chakra. And the negative polarity of the third chakra is about casting out um, or processing or releasing uh, negative emotional psychological problems. So that's why when the moon, which is how we feel emotionally, our emotional sense of self is in that very small portion actually um, of the third chakra, uh, zero to three degrees, people get too fixated on their emotional problems. And then they start to identify with them. And then they truly start to suffer as though their moon is in Scorpio, that Scorpionic eighth, eighth sign energy. Um, so again, the idea is that we're, we're, we're thinking about the planets and how they function within the chakras. And they will tell us just what kind, of, what kind of life experience a person is having. Does this make sense in regards to what I'm describing with the third chakra? Yes, yes. It's like the negative side that becomes very prominent if the emotions are focused and that harms the mind very much. Yes. Exactly, exactly. And that there is nothing wrong with being assertive and direct and striving for your goals. But the idea is that you do it from a six chakra place, which is from a place of wisdom, from a place of understanding, from a place of almost divine surrender. Then it becomes a healthy expression, which is why the sun is exalted there. Yeah, uh, so moon in Scorpio, it can be like, uh, you can say that the person can get some, sometimes too much obsessed if the goals are not met and the person feels that maybe I, I'm not good at this. Exactly. There's too much of a focus on that, um, that uh, the, of the difficulties in life. Now, people can overcome those things, and oftentimes people who have uh, the moon and Scorpio in that little small section, they do become very good uh, counselors or psychologists because they're able to, they've been able to see those difficulties within themselves, and hopefully then they can help inspire others to do the same. So th I, I want to be very clear in that, that I don't, when I see a debilitated planet, I don't necessarily think it is the, the most horrible thing in the world because uh, everything has... Uh, a hidden blessing to it. You know, for example, one of my very good friends who's an astrologer has Saturn debilitated uh, in Aries and a few other very important planet, personal planets there. And when I was first getting into astrology, I thought to myself, wow, that's a, that's a very difficult combination. And what he said to me was, he said, it, it is a very difficult combination. And he had, um, I think a few of his siblings had died and he had a very difficult relationship with his father. But because of all that, he became um, a, a youth counselor. And he said, if I did not have that Saturn, and if I did not have all those negative experiences, I would not be able to help all, all those children, all those youth that I can help. So it, it reoriented how I thought about negative planets and, and, and debilitated planets that, yes, there's problems there, but usually it's there to help, to help you understand something so that maybe you can be a blessing to someone else uh, in life. So just want to be very clear that I, just because I see a planet debilitated doesn't mean I think that everything's over. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like sometimes people say that regarding disease as an astrology. So uh, what I wanted to ask was uh, like, have you seen on a literal sense like <laughs> that if suppose the heart chakra, which you will speak now, the fourth one, I guess. Mm -hmm. so, suppose if there's some problem there or if Venus is afflicted or Venus is in a bad dignity so that uh, then they have literally problems in their heart or the one which you said, have you seen anything like this? I, ha I have seen something like that. And, and medical astrology um, is a very complex subject. So when we think about the chakras, um, many times we think of the heart as being the, the fourth chakra, the heart chakra. That doesn't necessarily always mean it's specifically the heart. It means this area, you know, the chest in general. So people could have difficulties, yes, with the heart or with the lungs or anything in this area. Um, to get more specific, uh, each planet 
depending on which sign we're talking about, has a reference to a particular organ within the body. So you're right in that we can look at the chakras to see if that chakra has a, a difficulty with it, some area of that body will have problems with it, generally speaking. But in order to figure out exactly what that problem is, um, we would have to get more specific into medical astrology and, and go into which sign is it in, uh, what are the Lajitadi Avashas affecting it, and then taking it into um, the D30 chart. So that's how you get more specific, but you're, what you've said is correct, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Fantastic. Yeah, and so the fourth chakra, um, the fourth chakra is related to uh, Taurus and Libra, which is related to Venus, because Venus rules over Taurus and Libra. And I always find the fourth chakra to be the most interesting of them all, because the two planets there that are exalted um, are both the moon and Saturn, because the moon is exalted uh, in, in Taurus, and Saturn is exalted in Libra. And sometimes people get confused. They think, well, why would Saturn be exalted in the fourth chakra? Because that is a, that is a chakra that deals with love and caring and relating to others, uh, things of this nature. But if you think about it, love is not about simply gratifying oneself. It's about taking into consideration the needs and suffering of other people. And so when Saturn is exalted in the fourth chakra in Libra, that tends to give people experiences which will allow them to be more open to helping others, to see people who are suffering and to be kinder to them because they know what suffering is like themselves. And Saturn in Libra, Libra is the natural seventh sign of the zodiac. And again, Libra typically deals with relationships. And a relationship is about exchange of energy. It's about change and growth. And so when Saturn's there, that's why Saturn is also, um, he gets um, a dig bala or, or directional strength by being in the seventh house, which you wouldn't think would make any sense because that's like putting um, restrictions on one's relationships. But that's not what it, that's not what it means. It's about knowing when to hold on to relationships, but when to let them go. So Saturn is all about knowing when to let go of relationships. Um, Saturn is all about knowing when to take something for oneself or to give it away, that idea of exchange. So Saturn has a very interesting um, role within the fourth chakra. And the moon, usually we don't like to see the moon and Saturn together. And that's because when uh, Saturn and moon are together, the moon is what we are what we think about what we're used to how we define ourselves and if we have saturn and the moon together oftentimes a person spends too much time focusing on problems again since it's saturn all they see are the problems but if we get just for example a nice exalted moon in taurus and an exalted saturn well now they are mutually rashi aspecting each other that's the, that's the beautiful thing about this idea of the chakras is when you get planets uh, in these uh, same chakras, they're going to be mutually aspecting each other, Rashi aspecting each other. So Taurus Rashi aspects Libra, Libra Rashi aspects Taurus. And again, with the moon being in the fourth chakra, the moon deals with our ability to connect to others. That's why when you see a full moon in the chart, almost always that person will be popular for some reason. People will like them. Um, if you meet someone with a full moon, this happens all the time. I meet someone with a full moon and I look at them, and I feel like I know them, like I recognize them, like I know them from somewhere, even if I've never met them in my life. And it's that moon that gives that capacity to connect well with others. So having moon and Saturn and exalted in this four chakra gives an individual the capacity to number one, connect well with others, to be empathetic to others, to understand that there is suffering in the world and how to be compassionate to others in that regard. So when I think about the four chakra, I always am I'm just simply fascinated by how um, how this, the moon and Saturn function together in a way that we don't typically think of as being something good. Um, it, it gives a greater sense of connection to people and a greater connection to service to humanity. And that's really the point of this heart chakra to be open and have that kind of connection and service to humanity. Yes, Does that so, make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. That's like more from a society perspective that, we, we feel happy inside and then like, others are also happy with that. That's so in that case, uh, like if suppose Saturn is in Aries, 
and moon is in scorpio then also they will rashi aspect because exactly they will rashi aspect each other and then what happens is uh, you have one planet saturn which is debilitating aries and assuming the moon is falling in that that because i only use the very that i use that small portion of of debilitation for the moon not not that the moon is debilitating all of uh, scorpio but if they're both debilitated there then what happens is we have a difficulty connecting beyond our own psychological problems so we have difficulty achieving our goals because we're too focused on what uh, what we can't achieve where we feel weak emotionally and then we have saturn there and if they're rashi aspecting each other uh, a person will tend to have difficulty um, being successful because there seem to be too many survival obstacles so in that situation, the person needs to get some kind of counseling to help them with their moon, and they need to get some kind of coaching to help them deal with those survival issues so that they can finally really tap into that third chakra and have that sense of personal power, which, again, is not about pushing people around, telling people what to do, or being aggressive. It's about achieving one's goals in a healthy way. That's the key. Yeah, so as you said that like Saturn starves in any planet who it is with. So so how have you seen these placements like Moon, Saturn conjunct in Taurus or in Libra? So how, how have you seen this? Yeah, so Saturn always starves Saturn always starves the planet that it's with by conjunction in the same sign. So if you had Saturn and Moon in Taurus, well, Taurus itself, again, it would depend on what house it's in, but Taurus itself is the second sign of the zodiac which deals with our resources and our ability to provide for ourselves and our family. So if Saturn is there starving that moon, what we'll often find is um, Saturn is about hard work and Saturn does well um, in Taurus, but the moon does too. So there will be this hyper focus on really striving to increase one's resources and one's finances, which could starve the heart because people who work too hard, who work too much, they don't have time to appreciate and enjoy the love of their family. So you see, it's good because Saturn does well in Taurus. It's good because the moon does well in Taurus. But when you put them together and we have that starvation, because actually the moon hurts Saturn as well, um, then the person has success, but they can't appreciate what that fourth chakra is really about, which is about love and family and being able to feel that support. You don't, you work all the time so that you have time for your family. You don't work all the time so that you work all the time <laughs> because then you don't have time for your family. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, in context of this, as you said, uh, the sun gets exalted in Aries. So, like, have you seen any connection with the fourth house, like moon or sun, the ninth house or anything like this, if uh, these things happen? I mean, in relation saying, to the chakras. You're saying that if the sun is, is exalted in Aries, but we have like the fourth house and the ninth house there, what that will do? Uh, no, I mean, uh, like take the example of the four chakras, that moon gets exalted there. So have you seen anything to do with the mother that... Uh, that the mother also comes in the picture or the mother can have that kind of you're right yes so what you're saying if i understand is you're looking at the fact that the moon is a natural indicator of mother or venus is a natural indicator of of yeah, of luxury so maybe that's linked to the fourth house and if that area is aff aff affected very badly then they can feel the, that thing more that's what i was asking Yes, and, and that's exactly right. And that's how, I mean, you know this, we know this as astrologers, that what we do is we look at, we look at all these things. So we'll look at the chakras, we'll look at what house it's falling in, and then we'll see, well, what planets are involved and what do those planets mean by themselves? Moon, mother, Venus, spouse, and luxury, Mars, brothers, and siblings. So yeah, we, we will add that as a layer to get okay. more specific, uh, where is it happening, how is it happening for the person? That's uh -huh, very cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes like uh, we have this like generally fourth house as we know Venus is the Karak also and Moon also but like for Jupiter you uh, said it was the second one if I remember so right like but, but Jupiter in a way deals with more of that higher thing so it, it is not that this that's the first chakra is about the first house and second chakra is about second house it it is not like that. No, no, I, it, it will play a role because a lot of times those chakras have similar, uh, like they, they have similar indicators. Um, but just like the chakras have similar indicators, well, when I look at a chart, I look at, let's say the second chakra for the second house for wealth and resources, just to see what's going on there. Okay. And then I look at the actual second house of the chart to see what's going on there. 
And then I will look at Taurus, which is the second sign of the zodiac. And then I'll even go to the Hora, which is the second divisional chart. So what I do is I look at all the things that relate to number two, and I see where is their overlap and confluence. And when I see something pointing in the same direction multiple times, that's what I focus on as being a very specific thing that they're probably going to experience. Okay, okay. Yeah. Good. Fantastic. So the last two chakras we will do in the next session, I guess. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. All right. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned for part three, okay? Thank you.